Hi guys, I'm James from Battery, and today I'll be going over the new dynamic voltage control feature in Toolkit 2.17.55. So dynamic voltage is something that allows the BMS to send charging voltage targets dynamically to the inverter to allow it to better handle the charging when close to full and to help prevent overshoot. So as you might know, the charge curve for lithium ion phosphate looks something like this. You can see that all the energy is in the center part of the curve and that there's not much energy on top. So large charging currents, which would normally barely nudge the voltage, call it, uh, cause it to shoot up at the end of charge. So for a well-behaved charger in a nicely tuned control loop, your charge graph might look like this. Charge starts here and climbs up as we saw, hits the bypass threshold and starts bypassing. That's this orange shaded area there. So in the software, that's CV9. We'll just go look for it now. So it's in hardware, cell one, because it relates to balancing. And we can see that we've got that there. Uh, CV9 set to 3.47 volts as a good default. Okay, so uh, we've hit that, but the inverter is still charging and pushing the voltage up. Um, so we hit the second threshold, initial bypass, which tells us we're going a little bit too fast and we need to tell the charger to slow down to limited values, which you can see uh, down the bottom there, we're heading into limited. Um, so you can find that in control logic and charging and extra. So you can see if you're running K9s, you have to turn this switch on and set this to a value maybe 20 millivolts above your bypass threshold. So 3.47 brings us up to 3.49 as a good value for initial there. Alrighty, so we've slowed down, our voltages are coming down and the charge stays slow until we hit the charge resume threshold here. So until we get to bypass complete, um, that's this spot here when we've done enough uh, accumulated balancing on all cells, which is 50 milliamp hours, which you can see here, you can configure that one, and that's per day. So if all cells have hit, it, hit 50 milliamp hours at some point in the day, we'll declare it complete um, in the, or per cycle. Um, and all cell monitors, if you're running uh, block mons, if they've hit 0.1 amps at some point in the day, then that counts too. It's a really important point to reach bypass complete as it resets the state of charge to 100% and also signals to the inverter that we're done. It's uh, vital to avoid the state of charge drifting due to small inaccuracies uh, adding up in the state of charge. So something that we feel is missed by many is the bypass session milliamp hours. Um, it's important as it indicates why, you know, it's not just important to reach 50 and declare that we're done. You can actually watch that value and it points to certain cells having to do a whole bunch of balancing to make up for errors in other cells and stuff like that. Uh, we'll be doing more videos that show this off um, and show how this reading helps monitor the health of your battery pack and how we'd be putting it into our insight system too. So if your inverter never reaches balancing voltage, then the BMS will never reach the bypass session value. It's important to make that sure that target lines up. And another thing to do is to make sure that active balances, depending on how they're configured, um, aren't preventing us from reaching this bypass session value. Um, yeah. And also another thing that can happen, um, it, the charger might not behave in the way that we expect if it has its own limits or, or internal control loop. So if a charger is very trigger happy or slow to respond, we end up pumping into uh, the battery a lot of current at the end of charge and causing the cells to shoot up as we see here. So it's a lot spikier, they shoot up all the way to the charge cutout value, which uh, actually stops charge for a good while until we hit this resume value, which I mentioned earlier. And it takes us a lot longer to get through the um, bypass process to get to bypass complete. So what can we do about this? Our existing method would take the state of charge of the battery and progressively lower the allowed charge current in stages as the battery got full. Um, that's actually over here in remote and it's called ramp targets. So we can see if we set that there. Um, yeah, it sets progressively smaller values as the save charge gets closer and closer to full. 
Uh, that's one way of doing it, but it's a bit complicated and doesn't work for all systems and also relies on shunts as well. So dynamic voltage targets are a new way uh, to do it. And here's a diagram showing how it works. So we can see that this routine is bound by two values, the dynamic volt min and dynamic volt max, which you can see in the software there for min and max. So when the curve isn't anywhere near the target voltage, like down here, it's clamped at the lower value, and if it exceeds the maximum charge target, it's clamped at that higher value as well. So you might ask, why does the battery ever uh, exceed our maximum target? Inverters and the chemistry have inertia. They're slow to respond, so after our instructions to slow down or stop, it takes some time to react. This means that when we're at the top or bottom of charge, where the voltage swings around, You'll see that cells surge up in value due to this inertia, but it's only if it stays there that it warrants concern. If you've set things up right, you can slow the charge, stop the surge, and balance things up again. Okay, so we'll go find this stuff in the toolkit. We're already actually here, but it's under, just to run it through, uh, control logic and remote. And um, to start, you'll have to switch something on in charging and extra parameters. Make sure that this switch here is turned on to enable dynamic targets. Now we'll head to the remote tab, hit edit as we have, and default. We'll put some sane defaults in there and hit save. Pin code is on the back of the device as usual. So get a little success message there saying that that's set up. We can see a few other things here. So, um, this offset here, uh, in this case 0.3 volts above the current shunt voltage, is what uh, our BMS will tell your inverter to target when in normal mode. You can see that when we're in limited mode, that narrows right down to 0.1 volts, and when we're saying stop charging, that actually goes down to 0 volts, i.e. the target is the same as the shunt voltage, so it shouldn't result in any charging. You can see those two numbers there for the offset as 0.3 and 0.1, depending on whether we're in normal or limited mode. In a fault scenario, or if the charger isn't responding to our voltage recommendations, we'll also cut back the current, as you can see there, and uh, all the usual critical rules further out still apply. So if you hit 3.8 volts, uh, we could throw a circuit breaker with an expansion board or something like that. So if you're unhappy with your current setup, give this new control scheme a go and let us know how you go. We have a few more videos on the way which talk about how you can lower your charge targets with more sophisticated balancing algorithms available already in our software to keep the cells at a low operating voltage uh, in their ideal zone. So stay tuned. See ya.